the H2 is interesting in this issue has absolutely no molecular hydrogen in the nucleus. Only in these arcs of emission north and south of the nucleus. So this here is going to continue to subtract it. The emission in helium and also rapid gamma, you can see, is dominated by the nucleus. The uh, lobes don't, don't appear there, that there is emission there, but it's just not as bright. It's just really bright in these areas. Here I'm showing some HST images taken from the Hubble HST archive. I've taken out the center here of the, of the nebula just to bring out, the, because it's just so bright, the saturates. Just to, to really emphasize the lobes. So you can see the lobes here. The dashed lines, those are the positions for pointings to be took with next. And this is, in this image, we see arcs, the arcs of emission, also the lobes as well. So we assume a distance to the nebula of 2,000 parsecs. This implies that the width of the lobes here is roughly 10,000 astronomical units. Here, I'm comparing the HST image in molecular hydrogen with our observations. This is taken from the slice of, uh, at zero kilometers per second. For the, and what you want to point out here are these arcs. If you see, you see these arcs here, H2, but you also see them in the HST image as well. This arc here corresponds with this region up here. It's still really bright in the center. So one interesting thing is the origin of these arcs. Where might they come from? Well, here, I'm going to step through, <coughs> step through various contrast levels of this, this uh, line, this uh, filter, using, this is HST image, using NEC3, the filter is F160W. So here, at this contrast level, you can see the lobes, the inner lobes of the hour lines. You barely make Outside of the lobes, you can see barely make, the, make out the arcs. So if we change the contrast, now you can see the arcs are more prominent. And you start to see other arcs as well here. You keep going. And so even more prominent here. So what it actually appears what we're seeing is another hourglass that's outside. And there is, and so, it's not as obvious in the center, but these here could be one hourglass, and here could be yet another hourglass. So it's sort of like Russian dolls. It could be three different hourglasses all on the simulator. It's been talked about several times at this conference about various, various uh, outbursts, like one outburst and another one later times. Maybe that has, this has that origin as well. You can just see as the change the contrast level those really come out. Here the, it's just saturated in the center, but you can see these are these other lobes. This is actually similar to the nebula of the Southern Crab, 102-104, where you see the inner hourglass, very tight waist, and outside of that you see this other hourglass as well. It's much brightier than the HD12, but it's also another example of this type of object. So now I'm going to talk about the core. We am going to emphasize the easier channel map. This is from minus 90 to 90 kilometers per second. The size of each image is 2 by 2 arc seconds. And you can see this is in the line of UV1. And here is the line of rapid gamma. And one of the things I want to point out it looks like the nucleus is split and it's right on the left side and the right. We're interpreting this as a torus, as the inner torus that we're observing in this object. If, if that's the case, then we, if for a distance of 2,000 parsecs, the width of the torus would be 320 parsecs. This is 30 times less than the width of the nebula. So it's very narrow. It goes way down, very narrow. Sorry, 80, 80, 80, 80, sorry, that's, that's 
That's wrong. <laughs> you're going to put an 8 here. <laughs> so here are some Hubble images of the core. And I want to emphasize here you can see in these images that the bright is brighter on the east side than the west side as we're observing things as well. Although the splitting isn't quite as obvious, here's in this we're kind of we're emphasizing it, but the the, uh, the contours you can kind of see that the SG peaks, but in our observations it's, it's more obvious. Here you really see the difference. This is at, I'm overlaying here the image of the core from this. And you can see at this at the same scale as this HST image. You can see how much narrower it is in the center compared to the hour box. Okay. So here, here are some actually so one thing. One thing we did was take one one dimensional cuts through. So if I go back to here, with one dimensional cuts at the different at the different velocities through the, the, the core, and that's what I'm plotting here. And what I want to emphasize, you can notice here, is uh, the left the the, the, the the position of the peaks shifts, and so it looks and so the core is actually. So the torus actually the peaks shift. So you can see it's um, at minus 90 kilometers per second, the peaks to the left, which is to the right, plus 90 kilometers per second. Here I will go into this and put it into the spectrum. So to do this, we decided, decided to use shape to make a quick model of the, of the nebula. And the best model we came up with was a warp core. So this here, this is to help explain the shifting of the peaks that we're observing in the center. This is a top view, this is freeform view, right view, this is what you can see rendered to see on the plane of the sky. And we would be at a positioning minus five degrees, and single minus five degrees towards the observer. Here's our model. So this is comparing the channel maps, really one, the channel maps to produce shape. You can see they more or less correspond to our observations. So to conclude, so when we find the lobes are bright in IR2, the north lobe is red shifted and the south lobe is blue shifted. The core is dominated by rapid gamma and helium 1. And the lobes are 30 times wider than their torus, so it expands a lot from the inner region. In the positions of the walls of the torus, which finally shift in velocity. We're interpreting this as an elongated torus in the center. Okay, thank you. Time for one or two quick questions. Time for coffee. <laughs> Let's thank all the speakers in our final session. We will reconvene promptly at 11.45. Promptly so I can catch my <laughs> shuttles to the airport.